So there was a really nice satisfaction of uh, exploring uh, an unknown cave. Um, it was really Neil and, and I, it was our first first time of exploring New Passage. And, um, and we had a great team getting Karen through. involved, it was brilliant. Um, it was just great you know, to be involved with it with Chris and Neil and I feel very fortunate that they invited me along on the project. You know. Thanks guys for inviting me along. It was um, yeah, it was very special to be to, to see your excitement and to share that excitement with you. Cheshire cat, isn't it? Excitement, eh? Different. <laughs> It's quite a long time before we got back, um, but we, we did, we went back with more rope. Uh, the plan is, hopefully, to get down the next pitch where we were stopped last time, and uh, we can see a chamber. Um, we've kind of got a guess as to where that is. Um, we we kind of think it, it could well be the point at which it joins Middle Earth. Uh, we'll survey today as far as we've got and then uh, yeah I guess we'll see where we're going. Last trip Neil went through this ridiculous squeeze and uh, yeah um, and beyond that it just gets bigger and bigger so who knows today's gonna be really exciting. Who's this? <laughs> oh. You haven't seen him before. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's our mule. mule. <laughs> Muff, we call him Muffin the Mule. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Zach. I'm just here for fun. So normally this water isn't here. The problem that we had, it had rained a lot the day before. So we, we weren't sure how much water would be going through the squeeze. Well, I think it's a good day to wear cotton over. As it turned out, there was a lot of water actually going through the squeeze. Uh, enough that when you started to slide through it, the water would back up around your head. And um, it was okay going down because uh, you had gravity on your side, but we all realized that having to go back up through it would probably be quite dangerous. Um, but at this stage, we didn't really have a choice. You're looking forward to that, eh? Oh, it's in your face like, whoa! How oh. am I take the helmet off? Oh. I think I might hold my helmet. The helmet gets stuck right there. Oh, he's going under. Oh, shit. Which one? Eh? The helmet. Down. P pull the front down. T turn your head to your right. No, other way. That's left. No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so we got down to the um, pitch that we hadn't gone down. I think I'm going to come through here and see what I'm all doing, eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, this is the big moment. Hey? This is this is your big moment. This is what you'll be known for. Yep. Alright. Woohoo! Uh. It was about 20 meter pitch and uh, got into this nice big open passage just went for another 50 meters. Basically went around the corner to the top of a huge big hole. Now we'd already kind of guessed where we were. We thought we're pretty certain we're at the top of the bungee chamber in Middle Earth. But the bottom was about 70 meters away. It was easily over 50 meters to the floor. And we only added 25 meter rope. I have sailed down to have a look and um, that was spectacular, really spectacular. It got an abseil out of the rift and the water is really high and it's made this column, this column kind of hissed past my shoulder and then you look down and it just disappeared off silently into the darkness. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. He had taken well over 15 minutes, and it doesn't take 15 minutes to go down a 20 meter abseil. 
He was yelling up all sorts of things that we couldn't understand a word. But uh, we knew that he was up to something down there. I had sailed down about 10 metres and looked across the chamber and on the wall on the other side there's a bit of passage and on the floor I could see footprints. And I went, this has to be Middle Earth. But there's no way I could get into the passage where the footprints were. But I saw a, um, a narrow ledge system going across the wall into another bit of passage and I thought, well, yeah, maybe, maybe. So I swung over onto a little tiny shelf and went to stand on this little tiny piece of rock clinging onto the wall. And it took an awful lot of soul searching to climb that two metres up onto that ledge. My only protection was my connection to the rope. And as I climbed up, that rope got more and more horizontal. So you can imagine, big fall potential. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I was lying on this ledge, pretty scared. Underneath my left shoulder was this 70 metre drop and the rock was pretty dodgy. But lying out at full stretch, I managed to poke the end of the rope through a little eye hole. And then I could grab that rope and I could hold on to it with a good solid handhold and swing my way around the corner onto some easy ground and then I just walked into the middle. Well, top of the bungee chamber. Here's, uh, here's Neil coming across the traverse and there's the streamway way up there. We'll come down, come down the streamway across this ledge and then, um, yeah, into there. It's definitely Middle Earth because there's, um, there's footprints. The other three all had their own little epic ventures coming across the ledge. Yeah, I ended up on my stomach and just slid over top yeah, of my stomach. Was on a <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't make it look good whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, that's how I didn't put my hand down there and just, yeah. <laughs> Style, man. So, how'd you like that climb, Chris? Did you enjoy that? No, not this part. <laughs> <laughs> What's going through your mind as you came across that ledge there? Uh, well, I can't really say it on camera. It's going to go on YouTube, so not too much for him. But I was cursing you for rigging it and making us come down. But, uh, <laughs> what have we got, 80 metres for us? Yeah, yeah. Some, were, some found it easy and some found it quite challenging. It was quite entertaining. <laughs> we all deal with stress in different ways. <laughs> That's right. I tend to laugh. You swear. He just goes nice and quiet. Well done. It's the quiet ones you got to be watch out for. Right? Connection mate. Yeah, that was um, that was really satisfying. We'd made this connection to Middle Earth, which was a huge relief to all of us because it meant that we wouldn't have to go back up through the squeeze. It meant that we'd get to go out the Middle Earth entrance which has some challenges as well, including the 110 metre lighthouse pitch, but uh, that over a tight squeeze for the chance of drowning, I'd take that any day. And Zach, <laughs> I thought Zach was a seasoned caver. <laughs> However... Oh, hanging 60 metres off the floor. So happy to be off that right there though. I don't even care. We've got Zach over here. This is his first time probably, well, he's only been caving about two or three times before. Um, <laughs> Yeah, for Chris and Neil, it was their um, first major cave, and uh, we just added a kilometre to the length of Middle Earth, which is now, the length is, like, is in the high 30s, 37 kilometres long or something. And also we added about 20 metres to its depth. So I suppose the, um, the big question is, is um, what next? Yeah. So Dwarf Store connects to the top of Bungee Chamber and this is the highest point really in the Bungee, well it's not, Dwarf's is the highest point. Let's see if we can hear this one. There's this massive hole in there, Chris. Huge hole, and you missed it. I thought, I thought it would roll. <laughs> so.